Greetings fellow Arkham Smiths, this is James Smith with Knights of the Smith Dinner Table coming back for another Tips and Tricks episode. Tonight I'm going to cover a few of the things that you guys have been asking for and I'm going to pop my list back up here. So one of the things that I noticed out of the requests is to make maps look a little more realistic and there's several ways we can do this. First we're going to start with some of the uh, tiling, then we'll add some overlays, a couple other things, we'll move on to lighting, and eventually we'll get into things like elevation changes and how to fake that. So, starting out, one of the things you can start with is your brush tool. Your brush tool is actually very useful for this. So we've got just your normal green grass area here. We want to add some dirt to it because you're out in nature. You always see dirt everywhere. Um, one of the things we're going to do with this is I'm going to adjust my brush size because the default size that pops up is pretty small even though the brush slider is like halfway across. Then, right here, got this thing called soften brush. This is really important. It gives it a nice kind of light look. And let's zoom in and you can actually see it as I'm placing some dirt spots. So if we do this, we can give it some dirt. And if you look, it automatically goes underneath. And that kind of gives us a very nice soft edge. And we'll zoom in. You can see that, yeah, the edge is really soft. Now, if you want to make it even less like in your face, we can come over here to the transparency and you just adjust the transparency and then when you place it as you can see the more transparency we add now with the darker tiles and everything to really get the see-through effect you have to go for the really light transparency almost to invisible so like right there is, is about where we would want it so if we wanted like a path to come in that's barely there, mostly overgrown, and as you zoom in and look, you can see the other tiles, the original tiles underneath it, but when you zoom out, it just looks like a really fine pathway. That's one thing you can do. That's that's the brush tool. It's really useful. Since Nathan adjusted it, it's been a lot better. It doesn't use up as much resources, I'm noticing. Um, it is going to get a much I don't know why I'm doing this one at a time, but it is going to get a much bigger update later on in a later version. Another thing you can do is, say for instance it's winter, you've got a nice uh, thin layer of snow on the ground. So we're going to leave the transparency right where it's at. I'm going to change it from the brush to the polygon tool because I'm just going to cover this with some snow. Oops, I did not mean to do that. So. The polygon tool can be trickier if you're not paying attention. Nathan is supposed to be adding a marker back into it so we can see where we've placed our points. But once I have it all placed, what you can do is then you come in here. You got your opacity here. That's the same thing as this transparency slider. You can adjust it to where the snow gradually gets more and more obvious. And then you got a nice coating of snow. If you don't like it that way, we can delete that, go back to the brush, adjust the transparency down some, because I think I had the transparency a little too high. Nope, that was too low. So we got a little bit of brush here, got a little bit of snow sitting. Now one of the things you notice is, realistically, if there was snow on the ground like this, it would be up on top of the rock, right? For that, we have things like overlays. And I'm going to switch over to my objects. I'm going to go to my overlays. And while I don't have a snow overlay, I do got lots of little dirt spots in the pack that I created. What you can do is you take this little dirt spot, throw some on there, right? We're going to select them all. I'm going to zoom. Uh, that's good. I'm going to zoom to there. Then, make it look like snow, change the saturation, bring it down, it becomes more and more white. The less saturation you have, the more white there is to the to the object. Come over to the transparency, and we got a nice dusting of snow, and if you scoot in, you can see it does look like a nice dusting of snow, or maybe white sand um, on top of the rock. So that's just a quick and dirty how do, how do I do little things to make the maps look a little more realistic? Um, from the tile and object standpoint, let me clear all these out again. I don't know why I'm clearing them out. It's just force of habit and I'm OCD. So one of the other ways you can really help is with lighting. 
And what we have here is a little quick pre-drawn cave, as you can see, just very simple, um, not a whole lot of depth or anything to it. But what we're going to do here is, I'm going to close this, and just because I am like that, I'm going to go to here, I'll grab some sort of light source, something that's going to be easy for me to find later. Now what you do is you place it outside. This works best when you got like this section out here where there's nothing to it. Take this, you're going to light it up, either control L like that, or you can come in here and toggle it on and off. And then you can set the radius based on the type of light that you want pouring in. So for instance, this is a cave entrance coming in from outside. So I'm going to change that to four. So it only comes in about 20 feet. Go back. Now we're going to come over here. For hiding light sources, this is amazing, and it makes it look like the light is coming from somewhere else. So we grab here, we change the opacity all the way down to as low as we can get it without resetting it. Then you come back, get rid of the drop shadow. The drop shadow is a dead giveaway that something is there. Go back, and see, it completely disappears. You can move it in here still disappears because we have that opacity set, but it looks better if you place it on the outside. So, I'm going to zoom down a little bit, come up here and we're going to change our lighting because caves are dark naturally. And you can see the light kind of pours in, gives it kind of a natural look. It's not reaching in quite as far as it probably would naturally. We can change that by changing the radius. I'm not happy with that. Let's try seven. That doesn't look bad. And as you can see, the light kind of pours in, and because it's the dynamic lighting, it nice and smooth transitions from light to dark. Where the shadows hit, we got the nice definition here. And like I said, it gives it a really, really nice kind of natural light coming in look. Now, when you're talking about natural light on the outside, it, it's a little trickier. Because as you can see, unless like if you've got the light at night, what you're going to need to do in some instance like this is we got this, then you're going to want to place an object, and I'm going to go up to this really nice apocalypse set that I've got. Um, wish I could share it with you guys, but the IP uh, or the EULA for it is actually pretty strict, and I'm just going to use it as a, hey, look, see what you can do with this. No, I have. Moss covered street light. That's what I was looking for. So, got my street light. Turn it. Set it to where. Okay. I center that there. So that way I got a good solid reference point. Place that there. We'll make the size a little bigger. And then, oops, that's not where I wanted to go. Ooh, I didn't think about that. So you can place it there. It's not going to block shadows just because of the way that the, the uh, drawing is, but it kind of does give the illusion that the light is coming from above rather than from below, or rather than being on the ground. Um, really, honestly, I can talk and talk and talk and talk, and I really can. But it's really best if you just get into the toolkit and start playing. Find other ways to do things. I mean, I'm just giving some quick tips and things to get you kind of heading in the right direction. So that way uh, you're able to do this on your own down the road. Now, the last one. This is a question that was asked of me today. And this is actually something that I really enjoy. So we got our building here, right? Let's say, for instance, this is a church, and you're going to have like a raised pulpit. Or if you're doing a throne room, you can do it at a raised dais. What have you. We're going to come over here to repeatables. Now, if you have the wild, this is really easy to do. If you don't have the wild, I've tried doing it in other ways. I haven't really been able to make it work. Um, you could probably do it with the color walls, which are these... Oh, excuse me, these here. You could probably do it with the dark gray. Um, I wouldn't really try any other color than the dark gray because nothing else really fits. I mean, the dark gray walls 
they could kind of represent an edge. In all honesty, though, the absolute best for this is going to be the edges from the wild. So we got our cliff edges. You can see, whoops, you can see. Um, here, let me move this. And for those of you who are asking about moving walls, this is exactly how you do it. You got to move each three, each of the three sections. You can do it one, uh, one section at a time. As you can see, it kind of gives a clear line there. Now, there's one thing about these edges that, especially when you're doing gradient changes or things like that, um, elevation changes, you got to shut off the shadows. And I did that much too fast. I apologize. So this is going to be automatically set to on. Toggle the shadows off. Then. Say, for instance, this guy is going to be kind of a roundish thing. You can kind of give it the nice elevation change. And it kind of has that look when you scroll out. Now, the cliff edge is a little bit more defined or a little less defined. It's going to have a nice um, rough edges to it. But as you can see, it kind of kind of makes it look like there's an edge there. Now that's going to work best on natural terrain. So like if I was to come back over here to the cave, say I want a little shelf up here, I'd start in here. And actually I would do this with the free line, free form. So I start in here, kind of draw my cliff edge, then it disappears under when you move it under so that way it looks like it goes right up to the wall and then we kill the light or kill the shadows on it so as you can see the way that it looks now it looks like you're starting up here you walk up and then you have to step up onto this higher edge and you can actually one of the things that and i'm going to do it with a stronger version let me kill the grid this just looks better without the grid and it's easier to see so one of the things about this is I want you to look at the strong one here is really well defined. So you can see the edge here. This is clearly the upper side. This is clearly the lower side. Now, if you notice, I drew from left to right. That makes a difference with this. So if I take it and I draw from right to left, if you look, the edge is on the opposite side now. So now it looks like we got a little divot here. With the cliff edges, it really depends on which way you're you're going to be drawing, on which side the uh, edge appears. Now if we go back over to the building, I'm going to get rid of these cliff edges because we don't want cliff edges inside of a building. What we want are the wall edges. Now the wall edges look really sharp. I'm going to bring the grid back so that way I can line everything up. So we have our pulpit. We're going to say it starts here. Oops. Go back to the line. We're going to say that the pulpit starts here in the edge. Now, if you look, I got my edge piece there, kind of cross, and I understand this. It whoops, and you can see with the the wall edge, it actually is really well defined on which side is which. So you got to make sure that you keep the edges moving in the same direction. Now. I'm going to move these down to the bottom so that way they hide underneath my wall. And already it's starting to look like this upper section here. This section here is raised up above this. Then we just clean things up a little. So we come in here. We're going to change our edges a bit. And don't freak out when that happens. I, I kind of got scared the first time I saw that happens. Just go to the other side and do that, and it'll fix it. Then come here and here, and then you got a nice clean edge. The only minor issue is you got this little section here where the, the things aren't overlapping, but it really cleans the edge up so that way the edges match. The other way um, thing that you got to remember is once again for all of them, shut the toggle or toggle the shadows off. Now, whoa, what did that do? Let's fix that. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Now the other nice thing is is you can come back here. We'll go to structures. We're going to use the official. I passed it up, didn't I? We're going to use the official uh there they are. 
ignore the names of those two categories just because I was having fun with them. But we'll come here to stairs. And you got a set of stairs that lead up. Now normally I would move the stairs to the bottom, but because this is an edge and we're wanting it to look like it's going up onto this, you don't want to move that below the, the uh, edge. And as you can see, when you scroll out, it gives it a really nice defined edge that looks like it's raised up above the rest of the floor. And the fun thing is, is that you can do this like I did here with three, you can do it with four, or if you're looking at, there's the edges, wall edge. So the other way you can do it is drag this across, then say I wanted a nice round podium. Move it to the bottom and it looks like some really good carpenter went in and made a really nice rounded edge. Now if you're really adventurous and you want it to be a different type of floor, you don't want to do this before you put the edge up because then it, it's really hard to follow it going that way. But say I want a different floor up there. Oh, excuse me very much. Switch to the polygon tool. We're going to go with the parquet. Start up here, go to there. And then you have to very carefully follow this black line. The reason you follow the black line is, and when I get to the other side, I'm going to show what happens when you move into the shadow. Now, when you're doing this with the polygon tool, the more points that you make, the smoother the round transition is going to be. Like I said, over here I was going to head out into the shadow a little more. Then I'll come back and hit on the wall or on the uh, black line. I apologize. Right click and I'm going to move that to the top. Hmm. For some reason, did not do the right flooring. So let's do this again. I apologize. There we go. That looks like the different flooring. So if you're not super careful and you start to wander out into the shadow section, and I'll move this, I'll move up a little closer to the pace that I work at so I can finish this section off. I see the problem. I had a senior moment. So one more time. Yes, even I mess up, and that's not me trying to sound arrogant. That's just me saying, hey, I'm human. Sue me. That looks better. So, I couldn't understand why it wasn't going in. I completely forgot that I had turned the transparency up. Just when you're doing it, be patient with yourself. Everybody's going to make mistakes. Sometimes you're going to make something that doesn't look perfect, although I've seen some really good work out there by a lot of you. And everybody seems to really be starting to get the hang of it. And hopefully pretty soon these videos will just be about, you know, fun stuff. All right. So as you're looking, it matches up really nicely. we got a different tile texture here. But if you zoom in and you and really sharp eyed players are going to notice this, this section right here looks different. That's where I slipped. I didn't slip. I actually did that one on purpose. But that gives you the nice raised section and the shadows and everything. And then. Um, shut off that shadow but it gives you the nice look of having a raised edge there and then you don't have to try and do anything special with multiple levels or anything you can have the slightly raised dais or slightly raised um, area effect without having to move between levels um, other than that I've been doing this for almost 20 minutes now of which I think five minutes was just trying to do this floor section here and I apologize for that anyway um, if you guys have any more suggestions or you want to see me do something else, throw it down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I'll probably do another video here within the next week or so, depending on if I get any more requests. Uh, also, 
as new features come out, I will try and do them on new features. I'm not going to do one on the new Sirenscape feature yet. Um, I'm going to wait a little bit, and we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that plays out before I really get into it. Uh, beyond that, have fun mapping, everyone. Like I said, like, share, subscribe. See you guys next time.